Hello, everyone. This is Bradley. So today we are going to recreate this uh, vortex animation in geometry nodes. In the past, I've done similar kind of things, but I didn't like the workflow in general. So I think this is a very good opportunity for us to uh, pick it up again and see how things has been improved. So let's uh, start. So here we in Blender, let's go to nodding, and I'm going to create a plane add a geometry nodes modifier but I'm not going to use this plane because I want to access all this kind of vertices amount uh, within the grid nodes so let's go to the wireframe mode which I think is okay let's increase the size a little bit so first thing I'm going to do is to draw a mask in the middle so that to draw all this kind of vertices downwards here I'm going to use a preset which is called a normal displacement you can download them for free from the linking description this case is just uh, taking an advantage to really displace points uh, according to their normal which is up and down. So let's take a proximity fourth and plug the fourth into displacement. Immediately we do not see any effect but if you increase the scale then you have the scale for the fourth. Okay. And then I'm going to draw this down but uh, I do not really like this interpolation. Okay. So if you decrease EC, it just becomes straight line. But here I'm going to use a float curve to deal with this interpolation. Uh, however, this float curve node only works in the range of 0 to 1. So we need to remap back to the 0 to 1 and try to change that accordingly. Uh, and finally, we need a mass node to really multiply these magnitudes to maybe negative 4 or something, whatever. So now we have a good interpolation and a displacement. Okay, I think the negative four is fine. And you can change this scale just to know. Okay, once we have this uh, black hole kind of stuff, we're going to add some noise to that. In this case, we can still use this normal displacement. And I'm going to take a noise 3D and plug this noise into displacement. So here, let's decrease the scale a little bit, increase the frequency. Okay. So the advantage of this, so the the order of doing this setup is very important because you may ask, hey, why do that? Why don't I just add the displacement on the top of this value by using the mass node? Okay. The reason is that I need to be able to set this location at this particular moment. So that when I'm using this potential translate node and dragging this Z down, then you can see this noise movement is being shown on our geometry. You can actually see it's kind of very subtle, but you can actually see its effect. And it becomes more obvious when we do the next step in which we're creating a vortex. So let's move on with the next step. In this case, I'm no longer going to use the normal displacement because I'm going to set the position uh, by really setting the position. So let's take a vector rotate node. And if we directly plug this vector into position, everything has been crushed uh, into the world origin because we didn't put any vector inside. So we need to recover the position with this uh, position attributes and then if we are going to use the ULU and rotate this z-axis we it rotate the whole thing and basically the trick or idea of the tornado is that we're going to differentiate the rotation magnitude based on their distance to the world origin okay so let's take a combine XYZ or combine ULU rotation I think combine yeah, combine ULU rotation will be fine uh, the difference between combined XYZ and the combined Euler rotation is the combined XYZ is basically you're using the radius by untaking this box. Combined Euler is you are using this degree. A uh, kind of idea. And then we could take a uh, proximity fourth. I'm using another proximity fourth because their magnitudes are probably different. Okay. So take this fourth into the values. And I'm just going to increase the values and increase the scale. So scale is always important. Immediately we can have actually this tornado. Here there's one thing I want to remind you. And you can see this effect. So basically our tornado is actually rotating counterclockwise. Okay. 
and you can see these weird patterns. So originally it's rotating that direction, but suddenly it comes back, which is actually the clockwise rotation. So why is that? The reason is actually because uh, the idea of this proximity fourth is we're, com we're drawing a sphere from the water origin and the size is one in this case. And the closer to the center, the more effect we will have. Away from the center, less effect we will have until it's zero. Okay, so which means there, this point will not be evaluated, so it will not be rotated. This point will not be evaluated. This point is not being evaluated. That's, what's, that's why actually you see a straight line downwards. Okay, so we're going to fix that. So take a vector mass and uh, I'm still going to use this vector mass but I'm going to take a multiply and take that to 110 so that it eliminates all this kind of z-axis discrepancy so it feels like we have decreased the magnitude of this rotation but we actually make the rotation more accurate because we make everything rotating counterclockwise so now we can actually rotate it and you can see the effect. There is one thing I want to remind you is that if you look from the top view, then you want a small magnitude, like uh, maybe whatever, 200 or 300, something like that. But if you look at the bottom view, then you can realize the rotation is not enough. So this is something that you have to decide uh, what's the result you are looking for. Or what you can do is take a mass node and uh, Add another proximity fourth, decrease this scale, maybe 0 0.3, and add that to the place. So that's within a smaller range, you can rotate that further. So let's increase the scale a little bit. So you additionally add some rotation specifically for this lower region so that it looks kind of more interesting. This is just a kind of a proposal. However you do that, as long as you know the princip uh, principle, then it should be fine. Okay, so once we finish this, I'm going to smooth this out a little bit. So let's take a set shade smooth. I also would like to decrease a little bit kind of ridges places. So let's take a subdivision surfaces. Okay, so now it looks uh, looks like a perfect, perfect uh, vortex. At the last, I want to talk about how to animate this thing. It might be understandable that so if we add a mass node, then we increase this value, then we're increasing, uh, then we're rotating the whole thing. Okay. So this is one thing that we can tweak. So let's add a time info node, take a 1000 value so that we can play the animation. And uh, by playing the animation, we realize the rate is too slow. So we take, the, take down the factor or we can actually, instead of using the division, we can use the multiply so that increasing the factor so that it rotates faster and faster. So this is just uh, something that you can try in your free time. But the more importantly, I want to recall the importance of this translate position. So the reason we have all this kind of rigid of this uh, kind of vortex is because the noise is actually displacing the playing up and down. Otherwise, without this displacement, we won't actually see anything. So here, by displacing it, we are creating all these kind of ridges. And by displacing all these kind of ridges, then we kind of simulate the fact that this vortex is actually moving. So if we combine this kind of animation together, so maybe take a 25, then we are creating a vortex which is essentially rotating itself. Okay. So basically this is the idea. So it, finally this is your choice how you manage to play around with all this kind of value stuff. But uh, basically this is the idea. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, probably see you next time. Bye bye.